Nathan Holland and Ben Johnson could well save West Ham United a significant amount of money in the transfer window this upcoming season. Now, the reason I'm talking about them is because I've got some footage of some goals that they've scored in a recent tournament. I say recent, it's actually been going on all over this weekend, and it's called the Hong Kong Sevens. Now, I didn't really know that this was even happening, so I went onto the official club website to find out a little bit more information about it, and the, it was very, very sparse. I couldn't find a list of the squad. There was a couple of paragraphs following a 4-1 win, which they had had against a sort of select seven uh, put out by the tournament organisers uh, in which Nathan Holland scored three and Ben Johnson scored the other one. But aside from that, there was very, very little information. Now, like all of you as a West Ham fan, once the season ends, I'm desperate for anything. Any Just grabbing anything that's West Ham, you know, any little snippets here, a story here, here an article there. So I went on to the Hong Kong Sevens official website. Not much better, if the truth be known. I couldn't even find the group. So um, West Ham got through their group. I, we drew 0-0, we won 1-0, and we won 4-1 got us through our group and into the knockouts, which unfortunately we've gone out of today. And, which is a shame, but it doesn't really speak of the bigger picture, which is a very, very good exercise. I think this tournament happens every single year out in Hong Kong. Uh, we went out, just for those of you that like to know, we went out on sudden death. It was nil-nil, uh, sudden death we went out, which was quite unfortunate. But the game of which I've got some footage, which I'm going to share with you in a second, is, is a 4-1 win. Uh, Nathan Holland scored three, as I say, Ben Johnson scored one, and I just think it's a good exercise. A lot of good teams in this tournament. Wolves are out there, Fulham are out there. Um, I've, I've, I've 20, 20, odd, 20 odd teams out, and it's, it's been a really good exercise. Uh, Dan Kemp's gone, and kind of Coventry's gone, uh, Pasca's gone, I think, but again, it's so hard to get the information, and obviously Holland and Johnson as well, who just look so good. Now, Ben Johnson, obviously, has uh, featured, uh, got his debut, got his first debut at left-back, wasn't it, against Manchester City, which I thought was a huge, a huge show of faith from Pellegrini. And he has so many attributes that are going to serve him well. I first saw Ben Johnson at a, an under-23 game, and then I watched him again. I think he was only 16 as well, um, in at Wickham in the Checker Trade Trophy. If you remember, we did a report from there, myself and Mike. Uh, he looks really, really good, and he seems to have grown again. He, he's, he's really is, he really is turning into a man. He's got pace. He reads the game really well. He's got a football brain. Um... He's physically good and he's technically very, very good, as you'll see from this finish here. But as I say, these are just snippets, uh, just generally his all-round play. is really good. And when you look at the situation that we have at right back, and right back is what he is. He just played at left back because we were, we, well, we were short in that particular game against Manchester City. When you look at Ryan Fredericks, who is an absolute speed merchant, when you look at Zabaleta, who clearly is coming to the end of his career, I can really see an opportunity for Ben Johnson to play some games this season. Now, I'm not saying Ben and Nathan are going to feature, are going to become first team reg starters, but I do think they're going to feature. And this is their season. Nathan was very, very unlucky. When David Moyes came in, David Moyes fancied him. David Moyes knew all about him from David Moyes' time at Everton. Not that Nathan was a prominent at Everton, but obviously Moyes still had contacts at that club. And he was very aware of Nathan coming through the ranks. We did very well. Terry Wesley did very, very well to get him and entice him over to West Ham. And what I like so much about him is he plays with his head up. So many now, you see these players, they play with their head down, everything is a surprise. He's always very aware of what's going on around him in the game. And as I say, Moyes would have started him. Uh, particularly, there was, there was a patch when he really wanted to get him uh, heavily involved towards the end of the season. And uh, Nathan was injured. He was very, very unlucky with injury. In fact, I'm actually adamant that last season, had he not been injured again, it would have been Nathan who got his chance rather than Grady Dean Garner. And we saw... Al Grady took that uh, the opportunity, uh, grabbed the ball by the horns and made the most of the opportunity, the opportunity that was afforded to him. But I do think this is Nathan's uh, season. Nathan is very, very technically good. As I say, he plays with his head up. He plays with pace. And what I like, if you watch the first goal, he starts off the move and he doesn't just stand there and admire his work. What he does, he follows the ball in. And, um, and looks for the receiver pass, a good square ball. But 
this is not the first time he's done this. This is a regular feature of his play, as you'll see from another clip, where you've got exactly the same thing. The good work is done. He doesn't just admire his work. He follows it in and finishes off the goal. Technically very, very good. Uh, he's also very, very good at set plays. He, he can dribble, as you can see. He, he can dribble, he can uh, go past players, nutmegs, go right or left. Um, plays predominantly on the left, but uh, cuts in onto his right very, very well indeed. But he'll make the delivery, so he's good for set plays as well. Knows how to finish, and of course, when he is wide, can just whip that ball in to the striker and make himself very, very effective. So I think these are qualities that are going to suit West Ham very, very well going into it. And at the very least, I don't think we need to look at purchasing another winger. I think we're certainly strong on the right side. And I think uh, Nathan makes us strong on the left-hand side. He's been training with the first team as well. I think he can only learn uh, from Felipe Anderson. And I do see a lot of similarities in the way they play. Anderson's a, a floater, <laughs> if you pardon the expression. Um, and Nathan's the same as well. He glides across the pitch, head up, looking for the opportunity, very aware of his teammates and those around him. So do expect to see these two guys feature prominently Ben Johnson and Nathan Holland in pre-season with the first team I would also expect as I said in the cup of tea video in the week that we'll almost be running a two-pronged uh, pre-season because we've got the trip out to China and we're going to see some more domestic stuff as well it'll be very interesting to see where these guys feature in which squad they feature and how much they feature as well because uh, they, I think they've got their future ahead of them uh, for those of you who don't know Terry Wesley has, has gone he's, he's left uh, or, or is leaving uh, the academy which he's done tremendous work he's been really really good so uh, he's got a new consultancy um, job a, a technical director's job I can't even remember where, to be honest with you. But, you know, the very best of luck uh, to Terry because he's done tremendously, tremendously well. Um, but they're having a clear out. The academy having a clear out at the moment. So they're releasing a number of players and they're, they're taking in a load more. So the, the progression uh, continues uh, at pace. Uh, certainly, you certainly look at what's happened with Declan Rice this season. You look at what happened with Grady Diagana. It's going to continue to happen next season. And, and I like that because I don't want us to go and spend whatever money we have on six or seven players. No, I would rather us buy two absolute quality players and then carry on bringing through the youngsters because I do think, given their chance, they really are going to make an impact. And there was somebody else, I don't know, maybe somebody could let me know in the comments. As I say, it was so hard to get information. But the number eight, I don't know who the number eight was playing for West Ham, uh, but he looked technically uh, pretty damn good as well. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed watching him play. So, um, yeah, just a shame. But a bit sparse on the information. I'm sure I can't give you more, but believe you me, I trawled through the websites just to try and find as much as I could. But it wasn't there. I do think everybody's Mr. Trick. <laughs> Hong Kong Sevens are Mr. Trick. I think the club have Mr. Trick. Because I think as West Ham fans, we, we would lap this up. Um, but it, it is on there. I'll put a link in the description below. The video of each day is on there, but they've just uploaded it as a whole day's footage. So you've got five hours worth of footage to trawl through just to find the 14 minute uh, West Ham game. But I mean, good good luck if you if you want to do that and find out a little bit more about it. Anything else happens uh, in the academy world or anything like that, then I'll certainly uh, uh, jump on camera and let you all know. We've got some more videos coming up soon. That's more on the striker stuff. Uh, Geo is doing a sort of tactics um, analytics video. Is that right? You know, you, know, you know what I mean. He's doing he's doing one of his insights videos where he's going to take a, a look at, um, at some players in depth, possibly some players we've been linked with. I've got my own ideas on strikers. So uh, you watched a video the other day about uh, Morega and Rondon and who's the other one? Mitrovic. Uh, I've, I've seen a couple. I've seen a couple of others who I would quite like us to be. I think it might be smoke and mirrors, though. I think there's something else going on. And to be fair, I wouldn't be surprised if we make a sign-in within the next couple of weeks. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I'll keep these coming. Cup of tea coming in the week. Uh, insights video from Gio and Charlie. And of course, uh, our 24 hour extravaganza uh, charity video for Isla uh, coming up in a couple of weeks. So we're, we, we're going to keep the footage coming. So we'll keep you abreast of everything that's going on in a world of West Ham. See you soon.